Good morning, my superheroes. Today's topic is beverages. You are all welcome back to online class. Objectives. At the end of the class, you should be able to state the meaning of beverages, explain the different types of beverages, you should be able to identify the examples of different types of beverages. Beverages are fluids. Apart from water, it can be served cold or hot. Uses of beverages. One, it stimulates the body in cold weather. For example, during the cold weather, when you take beverage, it keeps us warm. Two, it refreshes and quenches thirst. That is, when you are thirsty, you can take fruit juice, fruit drink. Three, it nourishes the body. Example, cocoa drink, milk drink, bon vita, etc. That is, it builds up the body. Types of beverages. We have three types of beverages that we are going to discuss about. And these three types of beverages, they are non-alcoholic beverages. One, stimulating beverages. Two, refreshing beverages. Three, nourishing beverages. Stimulating beverages. It makes one to become more active. For example, tea and coffee. Coffee and tea contain caffeine, which acts as a mild stimulant to heart and nerves. That is, as children, we are not supposed to take coffee because it, contain, it contains caffeine. And when you talk about tea, we are talking about lifting tea, green tea. As children, if you want to take all those ones, you need to add enough of milk and small quantity of sugar so that it will add nutrients to it. But don't take ordinary tea without milk and sugar. Coffee and tea contain caffeine, which acts as a mild stimulant to heart and nerves. It is not harmful to adults if taken in moderate quantities. Even as an adult, we need to take in moderate quantity. We don't need to take excess of coffee and tea. But young children do not need stimulant. Why? Because stimulant makes you feel more awake and it gives you more energy. As children, you are ready, you have power, you have energy. So you don't need something that will still add more energy, like all this coffee and tea, which is not good for the body, but all the energy you obtain them from the food you eat. Tea and coffee do not provide any nutritional food value. It has no nutritional. It has no nutrients. But when sugar and milk are added, they provide energy and some nutrients. So as children, caffeine makes you feel more active. That is why Coca-Cola is not good for children because it contains caffeine. And this is not good for children. Remember, coffee and tea contain cafe. And as children, you do, young people do not need stimulants. So as a result of that, coffee and tea, children, you must not take it. If you want to take it, make sure you take only tea. Don't take coffee. Take tea and ensure that you had enough of milk and small quantity of sugar. That is the one that will provide nutrients for you. And as a result of that, by the time you had milk and sugar, the stimulants there will not be effective. These are the pictures of stimulating beverages.
helps to stimulate the vital organs of the body, of our body. That is, it helps to energize some vital organs in the body. Co coffee and tea are considered as a stimulating beverage because they contain caffeine. And children, you don't need caffeine. You don't need to take coffee and tea. And, and if you want to take tea, make sure you add milk, enough milk, and small quantity of sugar. And this beverage, usually you can take it either cold or hot. So these are the picture of stimulating beverages. The purpose of stimulating beverages are to make us stay awake and alert. As you can see the picture of coffee, milk, sugar. Refreshing beverages. These include commercial carbonated drinks, fruit juice, and fruit drinks. The fruit juice and drinks are prepared from fresh fruits, such as orange, mango, pineapple, etc. As you can see the pictures on the screen, these are fruits. They are either served alone in form of juice or mixed with water and sugar, which is sugar syrup, and served as drinks. Now, when you talk about juice, when you squeeze out the water from the orange, that is orange juice. Then when you talk about sugar syrup, that is preparation. Sugar syrup is the preparation of you boil your water, the process of boiling water, then you add your sugar. That is sugar syrup. And but you must leave it cool. Make sure the sugar syrup is cool before you add it to your juice. Because if you add all sugar syrup to your juice, it will destroy the nutrients, which is the vitamin C that you're supposed to get from the fruit. So when you add the sugar syrup, you leave it cool. After that, you add it to your orange juice. It will not make it as orange drink. But if you want to combine two or more fruits together, so by the time you squeeze out the juice from the two fruits, that is, if you mix them together, that is called fruit juice. But by the time you now add your sugar syrup to it, it becomes fruit drinks. And they are good source of vitamin C. Refreshing beverages are good source of vitamin C. So these are the pictures of refreshing beverages as you can see them on the screen. These are commercial carbonated drinks. For children, you are not advised to take Coca-Cola. It is not good for children. Now, these are the pictures of refreshing beverages. These are the pictures of refreshing beverages. As you can see it on the screen. And these are also examples of refreshing beverages. Now, the third one, nourishing beverages, are rich in bodybuilding nutrients. Nourishing beverages builds up the body. Examples are cocoa drinks, egg drinks, milk drinks. Milk and egg beverages are very nourishing and ideal for invalids. Who are the invalids? Invalids are the sick people. You know, as, you know someone that is sick, they need nourishing beverages like milo, milk, in order to build up the body. And it is also good for children because they are growing. As children, as you are growing, you need nourishing beverages. You need to take milk. You need to take um, egg drink. You need to take milk drink. You need bone vita. You need milo. These are nourishing beverages so that it will, it will build up the body. As you are going, it builds up the body, it promotes growth. 
Then also, it is also good for nursing, for the nursing mothers. Nursing mothers or lactating mothers, someone that just put to bed, someone that just give birth, they are called nursing mother. And they are also known as lactating mothers, someone that just put to bed, that just, they are nursing mothers or lactating mothers. They too, they need nourishing beverages in order to build up the body and to replace the monal tissues. As you can see the pictures on the screen, these are the nourishing beverages. And you can see more examples of nourishing beverages. See it, see the pictures, nourishing beverages. Children, I want you to concentrate and watch this video. Make sure you learn from this video. It's Umsum time. What does soda do to your body? Hmm? It makes my skin glow. No. Huh? Sodas contain high amounts of sugar. Within 20 minutes of drinking soda, the high sugar content enters our bloodstream and sends our pancreas into overdrive, thus causing it to produce a burst of insulin. However, over time, this can lead to diabetes. Also, as we drink more and more sodas, the high sugar content tricks our liver to convert the sugar into fat, which gets deposited around our vital organs, thus causing them to dysfunction. Sodas also contain various acids. These acids combined with the sugar can erode the tooth enamel, thus damaging our teeth. Phosphoric acid present in sodas is specifically believed to interrupt the process of absorption of calcium by bones, thus making them brittle. Besides this, overconsumption of sodas is also linked to kidney and heart-related diseases. Why don't we drink seawater? Simple, because it tastes salty. You are right, but besides taste, we don't drink seawater because it contains extreme amount of salt which can have dangerous effects on our body. Really? Indeed. Now, normally in our body, the amount of water and salt inside and outside ourselves is the same. However, if we drink seawater, the amount of salt outside our cells will increase, making the outside region much more concentrated. Hence, to dilute the outside region and maintain balance, inside and outside the cells, the water present inside the cells starts flowing outside, causing our cells to shrink. Dude, this can have really dangerous consequences, right? Absolutely. Moreover, to remove the extreme amount of salt, our kidneys will produce more urine, making us urinate more water and thus causing severe dehydration. Hmm. How much water should you drink per day? Hmm. 68.273564981 liters. Now, up to 60% of the human adult body is water. But every day, we lose some of this water through sweat, urine, etc. So, we need to replenish it. Now, there's a popular 8x8 eight eight rule which says every day one should drink 8 glasses, each containing 8 ounces of water. Whereas, the Institute of Medicine suggests that the total water intake, including all beverages and food, should be 2.7 liters for women and 3.7 liters liters for men. However, no single formula fits everyone, but our amazing body itself tells us when we need water. For example, dark yellow urine is usually a very good sign of dehydration. Exercise, climate, and conditions like diarrhea, vomiting, etc. can lead to additional water loss. So, our body makes us feel more thirsty. This brings us to the conclusion that the water needs vary from person to person and situation to situation. <laughs> Children, I hope you've learned more on this video that every day we should take eight glass cups of water. My superheroes, 
make sure you attempt your quiz on the Edmodo platform. Please make sure you attempt your quiz on the Edmodo platform. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Bye.